What's up everyone? Thank you all for tuning in today. And on today's video, we're going to talk about why the carnivore diet isn't working for you. Now, unless you've been under a rock in the health space in the last couple of years, you will know that kind of the new trendy diet for everyone to try is the carnivore diet. It was seemingly Atkins 20 years ago and then vegan came on in conjunction with paleo and keto. And over the last couple of years, people just wanted to take it to the even grace extreme and go completely carnivore. Full disclosure, I myself have tried it. I did it for about a month and I'll touch on throughout this video kind of some of my experiences and some of the things that I drew from it and things I've seen from working with uh, different patients that have had issues and they've resorted to using the carnivore diet. Now, a lot of people use the carnivore diet as a means to try and help with gut issues, skin issues, brain fog, focus, cognition. There's a number of ways that people are using this diet for, and a lot of it is attributed to these defense mechanisms and plants that prevent them from eating us or prevent us from wanting to fully eat and assimilate them. And that is a topic in terms of, is that actually legit? And is that a good idea? That's a topic for a whole nother video. Today, I just wanna talk about the things that I've seen with people that make the carnivore diet a struggle and maybe even why they shouldn't be doing one and reasons that they think they're doing it for may not actually be the case. So I'm gonna start with number one, there's a concept called endotoxemia. Now that's a really fancy word, but if you break it down, endo means within, so within the body, and toxemia means sort of a toxic event. And endotoxins are present on the cell walls of certain kinds of bacteria. And every time we eat food, there is a die off of bacteria in our gut. You know, the, if we feed certain species, they're allowed to survive and thrive and other species are left to starve and die off. And sometimes this die off results in the release of some of these endotoxin fragments on the cell wall of bacteria. And if you have an environment where there's intestinal permeability, leaky gut, these endotoxins can make their way into the bloodstream and that can lead to systemic inflammatory responses, AKA you get the symptoms of brain fog, joint pain, swelling, and just random places. Now, the reason I'm talking about endotoxemia in the context of a carnivore diet is things that can lead to endotoxemia taking place are a very high carb, high fat meal in the setting of already some underlying metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance, but also a high saturated fat meal can also induce endotoxemia if in the right environment. Why is that important with carnivores? Is because you have people eating a lot of eggs, some people are eating using a lot of bacon, and a lot of ground meat of the non-lean cuts, you know, you have your 85-15, your 80-20, because people are trying to get enough fat. Now there's, we know fat is important, but if you overdo it on the saturated fat in a meal, think also bulletproof or keto coffee of everyone putting butter and heavy whipping cream and coconut oil into their coffee, is you are delivering a huge bolus or a huge amount of saturated fat to the gut at one time. And if the right environment, you can get that endotoxemia event taking place. Now for me personally, when I did the carnivore diet experiment, I would have days where my first meal would consist of bacon, eggs, occasionally a little bit of avocado because I wasn't doing full carnivore. So bacon, eggs, avocado, and some 85, 15 ground beef. And I'm talking three fourths of a pound. So a lot of saturated fat at one time. And I, an hour later, I would be lethargic, fatigued, and have super high amounts of brain fog. And just never, I thought, the carnivore diet was a fix all for everything. So I was just really confused why any of this was happening. Come to find out again, that if you overdo the saturated fat, endotoxemia can take place and you'll get systemic inflammation as a result that manifests as I said earlier, brain fog being one of them. So that's kind of the, one of the, the biggest reasons that maybe the carnivore diet, if you're doing a lot of fattier meats and a lot of eggs, and a lot of bacon, and even a lot of full fat yogurt, that these are all things that are decently high on the saturated fat content. 
The number two reason why a carnivore diet may not be working for you has to do with protein. And the first reason we talked about too much saturated fat. And in this instance, I'm going to talk about too much protein and specifically too much protein fermentation occurring in the large intestine. What does all that mean? One of the beneficial things that carbohydrates and fiber provide to the human body is a fermentation source for bacteria that live within our gut. The bacteria ferment these products just as when you make beer or wine, there's fermentation that takes place to create the alcohol. The bacteria ferment these carbohydrates and they create what's called short chain fatty acids. Now these short chain fatty acids are incredibly beneficial for human health. And one of the main things they do for GI health is they act as a fuel source for the cells that line our gut lining. And that's really important for things and situations such as leaky gut. And if you overdo protein, you get protein fermentation, which is called putrefaction, which has been shown to create some very potentially harmful compounds namely that some of the the creation of some of these compounds as a result of protein fermentation have kind of controversial controversial evidence in the literature in terms of how harmful they are but we know for for pretty well certain that short chain fatty acids pretty beneficial for human health some of these byproducts of protein fermentation might be not so much and what causes that is the our gut bacteria have to have a source for fuel and if you're not eating carbohydrates, you're eating very minimal and you're not in ketosis, which I'll touch on in a second, they're going to resort to fermenting protein. And if you have all that protein also not being fully digested in the small intestine, maybe because you're eating too much overall and it makes its way into the colon, that's where problems happen. So you kind of have to have this perfect storm of too much protein not being digested and making its way to the small intestine, because most of it should be absorbed in the small, the small intestine. So it makes its way into the large intestine in the absence of a lot of plant material or fiber. So the bacteria start to ferment what's available, which is protein. Now, I touched on ketosis. Ketones can actually act as a fuel source for the cells that line the gut lining, which is very important because that means that they do not need to undergo fermentation by the gut bacteria before they can be used as a fuel source. So if you are eating enough fat relative to your protein intake, you can set yourself up for producing ketone bodies. And in the context of the carnivore diet, I know me, I was eating way too much protein when I started doing it. And I've seen that in a lot of other people that go to very lean cuts of meat is that they start to, their protein gets anywhere between 50 to 60% of overall calories. And once you start getting to that level, not only do you create protein fermentation issues, but you also start to overrun what's called the urea cycle, which is how our body gets rid of excess nitrogen that's accumulated as a result of protein. So it's, it's the carnivore diet is a stance if you wanna do it properly between not eating too much protein, eating enough fat, but not overdoing a large amount of saturated fat at one time and that's hard to do when you're only eating animal sources of food and the last reason the carnivore diet may not be working for you is you are trying to input a dietary solution to a non-dietary problem let me explain that if you're having a lot of skittish skin issues or a lot of joint pain and your hope of going on the carnivore diet is to resolve those issues. Now, if the reason that you are having those issues is because of autoimmunity to some of the plant compounds, then the carnivore diet may be helpful. But, and a big but here, if the reason you're having lots of skin reactions is because you have dysbiosis or an overgrowth of a harmful pathogenic or what's called an opportunistic bacteria then you can only diet your way so much to killing off that bacteria there are even some bacteria that pathogenic bacteria namely that thrive in the presence of bile 
Why is that important? On a carnivore diet, when you're eating lots of fat and lots of saturated fat, which has its issues that we talked about, your gallbladder secretes bile to help break it down. Now, if some of these pathogenic bacteria thrive in the presence of bile and you're always stimulating bile to be secreted because of how much fat you're eating, guess what? Your carnivore diet is not fixing the root cause of all of your problems. So you have people that, again, there's, there's good intentions and there's, there's good practices and good moral reasons for, you know, kudos to you for trying to go above and beyond and help yourself with diet. But sometimes diet is not the reason you're having issues. And namely, it could be a particular bacteria, virus, or fungus that's living within the gut that you have to use specific herbal antimicrobials, maybe even probiotics. And in some instances, you may actually need synthetic antibiotics to kill that thing off. And that's where it's very important that if you're someone who's doing a carnivore diet and you're not really seeing much resolvance of your symptoms, whether they be skin, cognitive function, or joint pain, it's important to work with a clinician who has knowledge of the carnivore diet. It's also helpful if they tried it just so they know what you're going through because they can help you with, hey, some of the pitfalls. If you've been doing this diet for three months and have only gotten 10% better, that's a problem that needs to be addressed because we don't know the long-term implications of eating lots of saturated fat and high protein in the absence of fiber or any sort of plant material. So thank you all for tuning in today. Like I mentioned, I, I tried the carnivore diet in hopes that it would fix my, I was having some unresolving knee pain and I was just having a little bit of, not depression, but I was just having kind of a lack of wanting to really do things. I actually found out that if I just readdressed my purpose in life, that that was gonna be helpful. And that if I just, you know, laid off so much high intensity snatching and pistol squats that my knee may, might get a little better over time. So again, the three main reasons the carnivore diet may not be working for you is one, endotoxemia from too much saturated fat, too much protein leading to protein fermentation in the gut, and lastly, you're doing a dietary solution to a non-dietary problem. And I hope you guys found this video informative. If you did, leave it a like, and if you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and I'll link in the description box below to a couple articles I've written in relation to the carnivore diet. And if you guys want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. And as always guys, trust in your gut.